What's the word, y'all? We are here. Game five is wrapped, man. Oh my God, what a series we have so far. Remember, <laughs> remember before the series started, there were so many people on Twitter and my mentions and all over the place saying, this is about to be the worst finals and yada, yada. <laughs> Where are you now? Because by, by my own eyes, this is one of the best finals in a minute. And I'm so excited to talk about it with y'all. The series has officially started. The Milwaukee Bucks go on the road in Phoenix and steal a game. And now they are just one game away from being NBA champions. Wow. What a game. What a performance all around. Let me give my, my nods to the great performances. All right. Giannis. Another dominant performance. In a game where it seemed like he was laboring a little bit. I think they even brought it to the attention on the broadcast multiple, multiple times. He came up when it mattered the most. Defensively, just ridiculous. Like, like I understand a couple series ago, everybody was like, man, how was Giannis a defensive player of the year when he won't guard Kevin Durant when Kevin Durant has 50? I understand those type of things. But Giannis is that free safety that's all over the place, that's there with the help defense, that's there with the help blocks. And he was incredible. When he was switched on to the guards, it didn't matter. He was locking up. Cash Money Chris, how often in this playoffs have we seen Giannis, Cash Money Chris, and Drew Holiday come out with big performances? That is the recipe for a win. Yeah, Cash Money Chris, on the on the call, I, I wanted to take notes. It's hard to take notes in the spur of the moment, especially when this series, the, the, these recaps are supposed to be me off the dome. Um, uh, Breen is just a, a magical guy. He's just so good at his job. Um, Chris Middleton hit a step back three, crucial part of the game, and his exact words were, more Middleton magic. <laughs> what? what? Is, is Breen looking in the mirror before game starting, thinking of these? Oh, that's just off the dome. Just one of the greatest to ever do it, man. I'm, I'm so happy that I get to, you know, see him in his prime. Hopefully, you got 30, 40 more years of commentating because he is, he is electric at the thing. And Drew Holiday, and though Giannis led all scoring, um, and he is the MVP. Drew Holiday deserve. If there was a game ball, if this was the game, give it to Drew Holiday because his defense, I mean, and his offense tonight was incredible. Everybody knew that a Drew Holiday game was eventually going to come. We didn't know it was going to be a 27 point game or 60% shooting and playing the most elite defensive possessions imaginable. Anytime I listen to a podcast where an NBA player is on there and they're asked, who is the guy that gives you the most trouble defensively? Everybody says Drew Holiday, and we are seeing that. Devin Booker, third quarter. I know I'm all over the place, but hell, this is the ramble. Devin Booker to start the third quarter on fire. P.J. Tucker getting lit up. First of all, P.J. Tucker low-key got lit up a lot of this game, but whatever. <laughs> whatever, whether it been Chris Paul, whether it been P.J. Tucker, whoever, whoever P.J. Tucker was on, whether it been Chris Paul or Devin Booker, he was getting tore up. But anyway, third quarter starts, Devin Booker comes out with 10 points. Boom, 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 boom. Then P.J. Tucker picks up the foul. That foul was the greatest thing that happened to the Milwaukee Bucks this entire game because that forced Drew, um, that forced P.J. Tucker to the bench and that forced Drew Holiday on Devin Booker. In those last six minutes of the third quarter, Devin Booker was an Alcatraz. Drew Holiday locked him up like he had been locking up Chris Paul for the last three or so games. Drew Holiday has been absolutely ridiculous and guess what pat content comes in hits four threes bobby portis gives a bunch of energy it was just such a great performance offensively and defensively for them but it didn't start off that way that first first quarter was terrible terrible to watch and and if the suns lose this series they're going to look back on game five the second quarter and be like man we completely fumbled the bag because things went dark a team that was notorious for passing the ball and finding the right man went to all isolation. And the only thing I saw, y'all remember at the end of, um, what, which, which movie was that? At the end of um, Age of Ultron. At the end of Age of Ultron, the post credit scenes, you got Thanos getting up from his chair and he says, I guess I'll do it myself. That's what Devin Booker did the entire second quarter because he didn't trust any of his teammates and it hurt them. It really did. It really, really did. And then the Milwaukee Bucks start to shoot the skin off of the peel. I know I say it all the time, but when somebody is so hot, they shooting the skin off the peel. And then now we're going to the third quarter. Oh, snap. It's close. And that same momentum that they ended the second quarter with, they transferred over to the third and got this win. 
as much as the Bucks had like all the momentum late second quarter, third quarter, the Suns did not stop their fight. Eventually, PJ Tucker got back on Devin Booker, and Devin Booker put together some good possessions. He hit the the, the baseline or the sideline out of bounds three. We, we got a bang call from from Breen, and um, just just the overall thing from this game for the Suns, man. Um, one of the big things is like I hate when they go super heavy isolation. I know you have Devin Booker, who's one of the better isolation players in the league. You have Chris Paul, who's one of the better isolation players in the league. But you had performances from Mikael Bridges. He was five for five for a good part of this game. They stopped the swinging of the ball thing that they had been doing all series. And then the one time they did keep swinging, 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 you got a Chris Paul three at the top of the key, but then they completely got rid of that. Maybe that's credited to the Bucks' defense, or maybe that was just them saying, okay, we need to go one-on-one because we don't know what else to do. Mikael Bridges should have had a way bigger impact, but the his, the people that are looked to be the playmakers, the Chris Pauls, the Devin Bookers, didn't find him to let him do his thing. Jay Crowder also had a decent performance. It didn't matter. But the real thing, the real thing is the rebounding. In this game, the Suns got out-rebounded by just five. Don't sound like much, but the offensive rebounding battle was plus three, and it felt like whenever, whenever the Milwaukee Bucks was losing a little bit of momentum, they got an offensive rebound, and that led to a bucket. Listen, Giannis missed a free throw, and the, and the people on the call, like, he missed it so bad that it was hard to get a rebound. True. But they, they got that rebound, man. They absolutely got that rebound. If they win this series, talking about the Milwaukee Bucks, if they win this series, there's going to be two plays that 20 years down the line, I'm talking to my kids about the 2021 NBA Finals. There are two plays we are going to look back on. It is the Giannis block on DeAndre Aiden in Game 4. And then there's the Drew Holiday rip. Literally ripped the ball from Devin Booker's hands and won alley-oop to Giannis oh my god talk about a nail in the coffin I understand that um that he missed the free throw but that was an offensive rebound it's crazy um Chris Paul let's talk about it um through the first three quarters Chris Paul was not not it and and I know he said in a press conference that he has a hand injury but don't worry about it listen listen if you're if you're out there playing in the finals, I'm not trying to hit no excuses. And I'm not saying it was Chris Paul with the excuses. I'm just talking about my mentions. Because, you know, I'm live tweeting these games. And I, my exact tweet was, Chris Paul has been playing out of character. And that's because I think in this game, he had he had one turnover, but it was way more than that. People on the call even mentioned it. Like, he had a, he caused, like, Mikael Bridges to get two turnovers because Chris Paul threw the ball so over his head, he had to try to grab it before it went out of bounds. So he was just not playing in his character through the first three quarters. And then the fourth quarter came around. He played a pretty solid fourth quarter, but it was not enough. Devin Booker getting ripped on that last play is, is crazy because they, they get the ball um, in this situation. They have one timeout. And listen, I'm not here to say that Monty Williams should have called timeout right there because at the end of the day, it's hindsight bias. You know, if Devin Booker would have went on to hit a shot or hit a three, nobody's talking about the fact that Monty Williams didn't call a timeout. But when he should have called timeout is when Devin Booker got to that left corner or that left um the left elbow, and there was two people in front of him, and he didn't know Drew Holiday was behind him. That is the time for Monty Williams, for Chris Paul, for Mikel Bridges, for DeAndre Aiden, for Jay Crowder, whoever the hell was on court, is to call timeout because obviously this man has three people trying to get the ball away from him. And I know it's bang, bang, quick second, but they needed that badly. They absolutely needed that badly. And going back to Milwaukee, we saw how the Phoenix Suns played in Milwaukee for the last two games. I think it would be safe to say that the Bucks have this series. I don't know the exact percentages, but I saw it on Twitter early today. If you win game five in a 2-2 series, major a good majority of the time you go on to win the series. You just do. So to go into Phoenix, because the Phoenix crowd was rocking, man. It wasn't easy. It definitely wasn't easy. They absolutely got it done. I'm going to look through my tweets again because I feel like I'm missing some stuff. I said the Drew Holiday game is finally happening. And even when I tweeted that, I did not expect it to happen to, to this extent. For him to end up with 27 is the exact number. 13 assists. <laughs> Speaking of assists, Giannis had a, a couple really ridiculous uh, playmaking um, situations or playmaking assists 
And the Suns' goal was like, we're going to bring a double to Chris Middleton and, and let everybody else beat us. And that's how you got such big buckets from Drew Holiday. We knew that we knew that time was coming, man. We knew it was. I am in love with this finals. I, I, I just, I can't say it enough. This has absolutely been a classic. I'm taking this one over last year's. Even though, I'm not saying last year's finals was bad because we had... Jimmy Butler and the Miami he come out of nowhere and Jimmy Butler giving triple doubles and 40 point games that it was a good series as well but I think what puts this over it it might be the fan interaction just just it feels like the fight last year I don't know if I can necessarily say it felt like the finals this year it absolutely does you can tell that some of these players on his court are playing like this is the very very last possession and today throughout the entire game it felt like Milwaukee wanted it more, whether it be the loose loose balls, whether it be the rebounding. And again, for another game, they completely, well, I guess not. It felt like they really got to prevent DeAndre Aiden from having the big impact that he had had the previous series. Now, looking at the box score, 20 and 10 is a great stat line, but it didn't feel like a 20 and 10 game for DeAndre Aiden. So much so that there was the one possession where it's isolation, 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 then DeAndre Aiden gets the ball with like two seconds to go and he has to just throw up a shot. They, they had a play where he got it on the block, and DeAndre Aiden is not like a crazy post move. He ain't Tim Duncan. He ain't Kim Elijah one. He's like a little, little boop. I'm going to get the ball. I'm a boop. I'm a boop. I'm going to do a turnaround jump shot. And they tried to get him to go down and get dirty with it. You know? And that's just not really him right now. Wow. I, I'm seeing people in my I'm actually seeing people argue right here because one of the people that's arguing, I follow. Shout out to my guy, Christian. And after the Drew Holiday rip, I said, oh my God, Drew Holiday. And somebody said, that's a foul on Drew. Um, yeah, no. No. Then he throws a screenshot of, yes, Drew Holiday may have touched hand, but that's not a foul. You know what I'm saying? What is the old saying? Is hand is a part of the ball in the basketball play. So, yeah, he got a little bit of hand. He sure did. But it's okay. It's okay. I, I want Chris Paul to play better. <laughs> that's not breaking news everybody knows i love chris paul i want chris paul to play better but i'm a, if if the bucks win this game i'm not terribly upset yes i want to see chris paul win a championship but i think the the bucks the both of these teams actually the way they built their teams to get to this point is admirable and i like it bucks fans have been down bad for a long time bro i like like legitimately can't think of the last time the milwaukee bucks were like super good other than the last couple years. So their fan base had been through it. Through the Brandon Jennings days, through the Monte Ellis days, through the Zaza Pachulia days. You had some, what? Who who else? The Michael Red days, of course. The, oh my God, Bobby Simmons days. Bobby Simmons played for y'all, didn't he? Hey, we'll see game number six. I don't expect the Suns to get blown out. But the end of this game could definitely be demoralizing. If it happened in game number six where it wasn't a close game and it wasn't blowout, I, I wouldn't be surprised, bro. A game like this that was in grasp, especially after that first quarter, and you, you let it slip away, can be demoralizing. But we'll see. What is that, Tuesday? Ah, oh, that's amazing. Hey, you enjoyed the video? Leave it a like, man. Let me know what you think. Give me your final predictions. Is it Bucks and six? Was Brandon Jennings just too early? Was he just too early? He was talking about series from... Eight, nine years in the future, not the series against. Is that against LeBron? I forget. All right, appreciate y'all.